Earth has always gone through climate changes throughout its history, from ice ages to warmer and wetter periods. But what exactly causes such dramatic shifts in the climate? For a long time, this was a question without a clear answer. It wasn't until the 20th century that a Serbian engineer and mathematician named Milutin Milankovic proposed a surprisingly elegant explanation, one not based on processes happening on Earth's surface, but on the movements the planet makes around the sun. This theory, known as the Milankovic cycles, transformed the way we understand major climate changes in the past, and it might even give us clues about the future. But what exactly are these cycles? They are periodic variations in Earth's orbit and the tilt of its axis, which, over tens to hundreds of thousands of years, change the amount and distribution of sunlight reaching different parts of the planet. This sunlight, called insulation, is the main driver of our climate. When it changes, the global climate responds. Milankovic realized that three main factors control this cosmic dance. The eccentricity of Earth's orbit, the obliquity, or axial tilt, and precession, which is the slow wobble of the Earth's rotational axis. Each of these elements affects the climate in a different way, and together they create complex patterns that match the geological evidence of ice ages and interglacial periods recorded in ice cores and ocean sediments. Let's take a closer look at each of these factors, starting with eccentricity. Earth's orbit around the Sun isn't a perfect circle. It's an ellipse that can become more or less elongated over a cycle that lasts about 100,000 years. When the eccentricity is higher, the difference between Earth's closest and farthest distance from the Sun becomes more significant. This means there's a greater variation in the amount of solar radiation the planet receives throughout the year. When the orbit is more circular, that difference almost disappears, and the insulation is distributed more evenly. This variation in eccentricity doesn't change the total energy received during the year that much, but it does have a major influence on the contrast between the seasons, especially when combined with the other factors. Obliquity, on the other hand, is the angle of Earth's axial tilt in relation to the plane of its orbit. This angle varies between about 22.1 degrees and 24.5 degrees in a cycle of roughly 41,000 years. When the tilt is greater, the hemispheres receive more solar radiation during their respective summers, which intensifies the seasons, hotter summers, and colder winters. In contrast, when the tilt is smaller, the seasons become milder. This variation has a particularly strong impact in high latitudes, like the polar regions, where the presence or absence of ice can amplify climate changes. Precession might be the most curious of the three. Imagine a spinning top slowly tilting its axis as it rotates. Earth does the same thing. This movement causes Earth's rotational axis to point in different directions over a cycle of about 26,000 years. It directly affects the timing of the seasons. For example, right now the Northern Hemisphere experiences summer when Earth is farthest from the sun, which softens the heat. But thousands of years from now, that summer could line up with the point when Earth is closest to the sun, making summers much more intense. This subtle shift could be enough to start or end an ice age, depending on how it combines with the other two cycles. Together, these three variations create a cumulative effect that alters how sunlight is distributed across the planet, changing Earth's overall climate balance. And geological data backs up their influence. Ice core analyses from Greenland and Antarctica, as well as marine sediments from the ocean floor, reveal cycles of cooling and warming that line up with the periods predicted by Milankovitch's calculations. It's worth noting that Milankovitch's theory, proposed back in the 1920s, was initially met with skepticism. But over time, advances in geology, physics, and observational technology confirmed the value of his model. He used Kepler's laws of planetary motion and Newton's principles of universal gravitation to develop extremely precise mathematical calculations, predicting how orbital changes would affect insulation in different parts of Earth. It was a bold approach, combining astronomy, mathematics, and physics, and only decades later did it receive the recognition it deserved.
Now that we understand the three main components of the Milankovitch cycles, eccentricity, obliquity, and precession, it's time to connect these factors to one of the most impactful phenomena in Earth's past, the ice ages. The big question is, do these cycles actually cause ice ages? The answer for the most part is yes. Climate records show a strong correlation between Milankovitch's orbital cycles and the glaciation periods that occurred over the last few million years. During ice ages, vast ice sheets covered parts of the Northern Hemisphere, including North America, Europe, and parts of Asia. These ice expansions lined up with specific combinations in the orbital cycles. Low eccentricity, lower obliquity, and precession positioning the Northern Hemisphere's winter at the point farthest from the sun, known as aphelion. These conditions favor long, cold winters in the Northern Hemisphere, with milder summers not strong enough to melt the accumulated ice. Over thousands of years, this dynamic allows glaciers to gradually expand, triggering an ice age. And when the cycles reverse, meaning higher obliquity and intense summers at perihelion, Earth's closest point to the sun, the ice melts faster, marking the end of these frozen periods. Ice core studies from Antarctica and Greenland, along with records from marine sediments, help scientists compare the variation in insulation over time with actual changes in temperature and ice volume. These comparisons line up surprisingly well with what Milankovitch's calculations predicted. Other scientists, like the Scottish physicist James Kroll in the 19th century, had already suggested that orbital changes could influence the climate. But it was Milankovitch who turned the idea into a solid model, based on precise astronomical calculations. More recently, researchers such as André Berger from the Catholic University of Leuven in Belgium refined these models. Berger managed to directly link the orbital cycles to climate data found in ice layers and ocean sediments. The result was further confirmation of Milankovitch's theory, with evidence that these orbital variations have been influencing climate changes for the past 800,000 years. Projects like EPICA, the European project for ice coring in Antarctica, were also key in this process. Through detailed analysis of the ice, scientists were able to identify how the planet entered and exited ice ages with impressive regularity, matching the rhythms of orbital cycles. But like any good scientific theory, the Milankovitch cycles also face some challenges and unanswered questions. One of them is known as the Mid-Pleistocene Transition. This complicated name refers to a mysterious shift that happened around one million years ago. Before that, glacial cycles occurred every 41,000 years, in line with obliquity variation. But after the transition, they began to occur every 100,000 years, matching the eccentricity cycle. The problem is that of the three factors, eccentricity is actually the one that has the least direct impact on the amount of solar radiation received. So the question arises, why did the climate start responding more strongly to the least influential cycle? One hypothesis is that, as ice sheets became larger and more persistent, the climate system grew more sensitive to small variations or perhaps additional factors like atmospheric composition, especially levels of carbon dioxide, began to play a more dominant role in climate regulation. Another well-known challenge is the stage 5E paradox. According to orbital models, this period, which occurred around 130,000 years ago, should have been colder. But geological data shows exactly the opposite. Stage 5E was one of the warmest interglacial periods of the last 500,000 years, with global average temperatures even higher than today's. This demonstrates that orbital cycles alone don't explain everything. There's a complex interaction with oceans, vegetation, atmospheric gases, and even the internal dynamics of ice sheets. These mysteries don't invalidate Milankovitch's theory, but they reveal that Earth's climate is an extremely sensitive system with many layers of feedback and mutual influence. Orbital cycles act as the main trigger, but the final effect depends on how the rest of the system reacts. And it's precisely this complexity that leads us to look beyond Earth to test the theory on other planets. After all, if the laws of physics are universal, the effects of orbital cycles should also be observable in our solar system neighbors. And in fact, they are. 
When we look at other planets in the solar system, we see that the Milankovitch cycles theory applies not only to Earth, but to nearby worlds as well. And this helps us understand how climate can work in different cosmic contexts. Mars is, without a doubt, the most fascinating example. Although it's a cold, dry planet with a thin atmosphere, its axial tilt, or obliquity, varies far more than Earth's. While Earth's axis shifts between 22.1 degrees and 24.5 degrees, Mars's tilt can swing drastically, from as little as 10 degrees to as much as 60 degrees over millions of years. This massive difference has profound consequences for the Martian climate. During periods of high obliquity, Mars's poles receive more sunlight, which can melt parts of the polar ice caps and redistribute ice and moisture toward lower latitudes. This means that water, a scarce resource today, may have flowed more freely during certain periods in the planet's past. In times of low obliquity, on the other hand, the polar caps grow and ice concentrates at the poles, making the environment even drier. These variations have been recorded in the layers of ice and dust observed in Mars's polar regions. Missions like Mars Odyssey and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter have helped collect detailed data about these formations. The layered deposits show cyclic patterns that match the planet's orbital cycles, reinforcing the idea that Milankovitch cycles have also shaped the Martian climate. But Mars isn't the only planet where these effects have been observed. The gas giants also exhibit interesting orbital dynamics. In Saturn's case, for instance, studies suggest that changes in its axial tilt and orbital eccentricity can affect not only its climate, but even the stability of its famous ring system. Unlike Earth, Saturn is very far from the Sun, so direct sunlight has little impact on its atmosphere. However, Orbital variations can alter how particles in the rings behave, influencing how much material is lost or transferred to the planet. On Neptune, the effects are subtler but no less intriguing. Since it's even farther from the Sun, solar radiation has minimal influence on its atmosphere. Even so, it's believed that slow changes in its precession, that is, the wobble of its rotation axis, can affect the frequency and intensity of storms in its atmosphere. Data from the Voyager 2 probe and observations from the Hubble Space Telescope indicate that Neptune experiences periods of increased storm activity, which may be linked to its orbital cycle. These discoveries show that the Milankovitch cycles aren't just an earthly curiosity. They are a natural consequence of the laws that govern planetary motion. Wherever there is a planet orbiting a star, there are orbital variations. And where there are orbital variations, there are climate changes even if that climate looks nothing like ours. Over the last hundred years, since Milutin Milankovic introduced his theory, it has become a key piece in understanding the climate of Earth and other planets. But like any scientific model, it's not perfect. Challenges like the mid-Pleistocene transition and the Stage 5 E paradox show that climate depends on a complex web of factors beyond orbital motion. The dynamics of polar ice sheets, atmospheric gases, oceans, and vegetation also play crucial roles in this system. Still, Milankovitch's achievement was to open a window into the cosmos and show that, on long timescales, climate isn't just about local phenomena like volcanoes or carbon emissions. It's also an astronomical dance involving the entire solar system. And as science advances, we continue refining this model, adding new data, discovering new factors, and connecting the dots between Earth, Mars, and beyond. So now the question remains, do the Milankovitch cycles explain today's global warming? The answer is, not directly. Orbital variations occur over cycles that span tens of thousands of years, while the warming observed in recent decades has happened much more rapidly, pointing to more immediate causes, such as human activity, and the release of greenhouse gases. But understanding the Milankovitch cycles helps us see the bigger picture. They show us that climate has always changed and will continue to change due to natural reasons. And they also remind us that these changes, even when slow, can profoundly transform the planet. And what about you? What do you think about all this? Do you believe the Milankovitch cycles still play a significant role in the changes we're seeing today? 
Or do you think human impact has already become the dominant factor? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos on astronomy and the mysteries of the cosmos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.